Hi guys and welcome back to UK Fly Fisher. I hope you've had a great 2020 and today you're going to join me on my 20th fly tying demonstration. Now it's a special one, it's one you've been asking for a while and today I'm going to be tying you the black mamba. Now before we get into the video, yes it's a black zonker. So why do we call it the black mamba? Well with each fly there's a hundred variations of each one. And the only way we know which one you're putting on is if we give each one individual names. Now, will your expectations live up to the hype? Absolutely. This fly is deadly and without a doubt the most consistent fly I've ever seen. Now, I fish a lot and I have a lot of experience in fishing and it's my job. I have to be good at this. If I get it wrong, people aren't going to trust what I say. But because I put so much time and effort both in the bank and at home researching, I get it right more often than not. And this fly has been so consistent over the last eight years. It's one of the only flies that every single customer who has bought one has come back and bought more. Now, two years ago, I came up with a stalking version. And since I've done that, my catch rates of brown trout, tiger trout, and spotted trout have gone through the roof. I catch so many of these species. The fish just hate the fly. They're really aggressive towards it. Uh, and when you're targeting aggressive species and territorial species like the browns, like the tigers, like the spartics, having a fly that uh, gets that aggressive reaction from the fish is, is instantly going to put you in a better position than those fish in the naturals. So with the black mamba stalker, we can target these species and you'll certainly notice that if you fish this fly, you'll start catching more exotic fish. I do highly recommend you tie this and a quick story to back that up is on a recent still water gathering that I went to um, earlier this year. I tied up eight of this pattern, the black mamba stalker. On the day I gave six away and all six anglers caught new PBs. I also caught a PB, my PB brown trout. Now sounds like a great story in the beginning. Unfortunately it's got a dark ending where one of the anglers on the day who was struggling, I didn't realize he was struggling, he, he said nothing to me, he decided it was okay to steal one from my fly box. He has since had them made up in Kenya and he's calling them Black Mombasa. Now unfortunately it shines a bit of a dark light onto the fly fishing community but I'd like to emphasize that this was just one angler on a day of 24 of us and his actions and his behavior uh, are not representative of the fly fishing community as a whole were actually a great friendly bunch of people who are more than willing to help you. And if he had just spoken to me on a day, I would have given him the fly anyway. You all know me, I'm there to help you. So without any further delay, let's have a look at how I tied a black mamba. So the hook we're gonna use for this fly is a black nickel nymph barbless from Fulling Mill. It's a size eight. It took me a while to find a hook that I was happy with, um, but this one certainly is performing well. And we're gonna be using a small lead wire from Vanyards. And I'm just going to come and put a layer on top of the hook that covers the majority of it. This is just to add weight which uh, counteracts that buoyancy that the rabbit fur will have. Break away the waste piece like so. Push it together. And then we're going to come in with a black 140 UTC. I'm going to trap it in just behind the eye and then make my way down the lead wire. And then when I get behind it, I'm going to continue to the back of the hook before coming forwards and then making sure all that lead wire is trapped down nice and secure before coming back to where I finished and then snip away the waste piece. Now our tail is Chartreuse Crystal Flash. This is from Venyards and it really grabs the trout's attention. I use this in a lot of flies and we're not going to need that much. Between Anywhere between sort of 10 and 20 of these fibers and you, you've got plenty there. It's going to grab the trout's attention and they, they really do not like this fly. Another memorable day on it was when me and Ben Beckwith uh, went to Manningford and the lake was booked out for some advertising. Uh, thankfully we got to fish on the day as well and this fly literally every single fish you put it in front of it wanted to kill it. In fact it was so Deadly. We had to move it out of the way of the fish to make sure we weren't just catching and bagging up on the two pounders. Uh, we tried to find some of the more special fish uh, and it's a really memorable day with Ben. Now for the rib I'd usually use a silver in the ultra wire but I've only got gold at the moment. I'm finding silver hard to come by so we'll be using gold for today's video just so I can get the fly up there for you. And I'm going to come in here and just tie this on the side of the hook all the way down to where we tied in that tail. When we get to this point here we're just going to spin our tying silk 
to make sure it's nice and tight. And we're going to come in with the main material for this, which is black rabbit strip. This is from Blob and Buzzer. If you need any Zonka strips, make sure to get in touch with Andrew Humphreys uh, at Blob and Buzzer, and he'll sort you out. He's got some great materials over there, and I love supporting local businesses. So all we're going to do with our Zonka strip is we're going to stand up our fibres. So we get a nice little tying point here. So I'm just going to pull them apart. Now I wet my fingers gently and stroke that. So we've got a nice little tying point there. And we're going to come up with two turns. One, two, before bending it back on itself and taking two more turns in front. Then we can see how that's sitting, which is perfect. And we're going to come in with the body material, which is Glister Sparkle Dubbing. Again, this is from Venyards. And all we're going to do is dub the entire body with this. You don't want it to be too flush. And I think the Glister Sparkle Dubbing nails it on the head here. Because it's, it's that perfect sort of in-between of a really flashy material and a dull colour. And it just works. This, this fly literally everywhere we've gone. North Wales, South Wales, England. I haven't been to Scotland yet, but I've got a lot of customers who use it in Scotland. And Ireland, especially on the locks. The lockfish love this. There's been some huge brown trout caught on this fly. All the way up to, um, I believe the biggest that I've been told about was nine and a quarter. And then obviously recently we've caught them eight and a half pound browns from Manningford. So it's definitely a big trout finder. Uh, the brown trout hate it, the tiger trout hate it, the spartic trout hate it. And they're, they're three of my favourite species. I'll, I'll take tiger trout and spartic trout all day long. Uh, I think they're beautiful fish and I really enjoy catching them. Their aggressive nature is really enjoyable to me. I um, really do enjoy sorting out the exotics from the rainbows. And that's led to the creation of these flies. And as you... As you'll see through my YouTube videos, as you'll see through our Facebook page and our Instagram and our messages from our customers, this fly really does work when it comes to picking out the exotic fish. So when we get to the front with all that dubbing, we're going to take our fibres and we want to take fibres that are slightly in front of the eye so that the body is nice and thick with um, fibres here. So I've gone here slightly ahead and then I'm going to grab everything on top and come up and pinch and loop. Three turns, pull it back again, one, two, and then another two on top. Before taking one final turn in front, and then we're going to come in with a Stanley knife to cut away that waste piece. Don't use scissors because you'll be left with a lot more bulk than it needs to be there. So just gently with your Stanley knife. And then see how everything's sitting. A few tight turns to tidy up that head for us. And then we're going to come in with our ribbon. We're going to take one turn at the tail of the fly, like so making sure not to trap any fibres down and then we're just going to take it up in open turns you, you'll get three turns per fly so one two just make sure you're not trapping anything down as you go and then three the idea is plenty of movements and then that flash in the tail and a little bit of flash in the body will attract the fish's attention and then I'm just going to tie this wire in here like so before coming and bending and breaking away that wire and we're going to whip finish with the black just need two little turns like so and then snip away the rest of that now for our tail of this fly we're going to actually cut it in line with the flash but we don't cut the fibers we just cut the skin so i'm going to lift them up where the flash ends come in with the scissors without c catching any of the fibers in just cut away that tail. There we go, and that's perfect. Now, for the head, I like to give it another hot spot, and I really do believe that sometimes this is the difference because I've tried it with a dark head, it just doesn't have the same effect. So, we're using a fluorescent green 140 UTC just to bulk up the head. So, you're going to come in, tie it on. Just put down a layer of tying silk here. Just as a contrast point, as a hot spot, as a trigger point. Just something to grab their attention basically. 
And the more fish that get drawn into the fly, the more likely you will get a take. And I do believe it's the combination of all of the colours and the silhouette it, it gives in the water that makes this fly so deadly. So just look at it on your side. Yeah, that's perfect. All I'm going to do now is come in and whip finish. Like so. Slip away that waste piece and varnish the head. Before I varnish, I tend to, with my lighter, pull everything backwards and just come in with a quick singe. Now the heat will help um, the UTC adhere to the head, make it nice and streamlined and burn away any of the unwanted under fur that might have got caught while we were tying. And then all we're going to do is come in and varnish this head. Usually I give them two coats of varnish. Just to make sure they're nice and secure and tight and not going anywhere. Now if you wanted to make sure your eyes clear, mine is clear there but I'm going to just put this through. It's the lead from earlier. You can simply do that as you put it through and that will make sure your eyes are always clear because I know some people have issues when they get to the bank with varnish and putting their fluorocarbon through. Well just keep a spare piece of lead uh, on your tying table and simply clear your eyes every time you varnish. So there we have it guys, that's the Black Mamba, that's the original, the one that's caught me the most fish over the last eight years, um, until I came up with the new version two years ago. So let's have a quick look at how that's tied. Now I'm going to go through this one a tiny bit quicker, uh, especially on the points that we've already done. So once again, we're going to be using that size 8 Black Nickel Nymph Barbless in size 8 from Filling Mill. And on the front of the fly, we've got a 4mm tungsten bead. And these are really heavy and they're going to get down really quick for you. And on top of that, we're going to, once again, apply a layer of lead to the body. Like so. Break away, break away that waste piece at the back. Now a little tip for you is the slot that you can see there on the slotted tungsten bead goes at the bottom of the hook, we push it up and we push the lead wire into itself. That's going to keep the bead nice and secure and raised. And then we're just going to come in at the back this time with the black 140 UTC and put down a layer of tying silk and snip away the waste piece. Now once again, the tail is the crystal flash and we're just going to come in and secure this where we finish tying in the lead wire. One turn underneath again, stops it spinning, keeps it nice and neat with the fly. And this time I'm going to take a full um, wrapper thread all the way to the front of the fly and cut again, just less than the shank of the hook. For the wire, again, I'd usually use silver. We're just going to put in that gold on the side, like so. And once again, we'll be using the black Zonka strip. So I'm just going to lay it on top there, trap it in, one turn, two turn, before pulling it back, one, two, like so. And then all I'm going to do is come in with the black Lister Sparkle dubbing once again. Now, as you would have seen over the last two years, this fly in terms of stalking and catching the exotic fish just outperforms anything else out there on the market. If you're not gonna buy some yourself to try, at least tie them uh, before you comment below and say, not a chance this is out fishing so-and-so fly. I fished, I fished for 50 years and the gelback is the best fly in the world. Trust me, I've put the hours in, I've done all the work and I'm telling you, this, this fly is incredible. Now I need a little bit more here, not too much more because we're not going to go all the way to the front. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to go back over itself a little bit just to create a taper towards the front, like so. And that's perfect. And then I'm going to pull away any waste pieces before tying in that little gap. I've got a bit of a waste there, I'm going to snip away. And then we're just going to simply lay the Zonka strip. Once again, we're going to pull the fibers from a little bit further than you normally would. Pinch and loop, a few turns in front, make sure you're not trapping any of the fibres down, a few turns behind, 
another two turns in front before coming in with the Stanley knife once again and snipping away that waste piece. And then I'm just going to catch that skin in nice and tight before coming up with our rib. Once again, we're going to take one turn at the back just to make sure it's nice and secure and it's not going anywhere. Two. You can get away with sort of two turns here because the zonka strip doesn't go the full length of the hook. So we're just going to go two by there and then trap it in place in this gap and then bend it back and fold it all the way down like so. And then you'll easily bend and break away by here. Now that's going to hold secure and we want our tail length to once again cut the skin in line with the flush. So round about here and only cut the skin so you keep that taper, you keep that movement. Uh, wet my fingers here a bit so you can see the taper you're going to get once it's wet. As you can see that's a great looking fly. And now we trigger point this with some glister sparkle dubbing in chartreuse. You can see there how bright and vibrant that is. Again, really going to catch the fish's eye and the fish's attention. This is all about an aggressive reaction. I'm not telling you that they are feeding on this fly because it represents a newt, a fish or a leech or anything like that. In my opinion and from my research, they are attacking this fly purely out of aggression. There is nothing in this that suggests to me that they are feeding on this or I'm matching the hatch. But just want a tiny bit more on that front there on my side, like so. And then I'm going to stroke everything back. And then for this part, we can just whip finish behind the bead with three turns. One, two, three. And because it's UTC, I can just pull down tight and the pre-wax thread is just going to hold as tight as anything. If you get a little bit nervous, little tip for you, you can come in with a lighter and just gently singe the front. That's going to melt the fibers onto the bead and keep that nice and secure for you. Now what we can do at this point is come in with our dubbing brush and just mess up some of them chartreuse fibers so that they come back through the wing and through the body of the fly like so and then when they get wet it's just going to add to that effect on the fly really really does catch a lot of fish uh, i highly recommend tying this fly if you've got one new fly to learn in the, the year 2021 make sure it's this one and please if you have caught on this or you have used this fly let people know in the comment section just how deadly it can be well, that brings 2020 to an end, and I'd like to thank you all for your support over the last year. Uh, we've grown massively all over our Instagram, our Facebook, and our YouTube. Uh, I'll put links to all of them in the description below if you'd like to follow us. Uh, a massive thank you to everyone who hits that like button, who comments on our videos and supports us every step of the way. I really do appreciate all the help you've given me. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn the notifications on so you never miss an episode. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.